Y'all pay attention. Write these notes. Because <laughs> I've actually like thought and reflected about this over the last you know few months or so, and one of the conclusions that I came to was that right when I came here, so I got here in the fall of 2015. So I got here in 2015, and you know I'm here now, right? So that's going on you know four going on five years, and in that five year time, like I don't think that. I've gotten necessarily smarter. I don't think that my intellectual capacity has increased at all, right? I think that, you know, I'm just as capable as I was when I got here, right? And in terms of like my ability to do the things, right? Or just like raw ability, if that, if you will, right? The ability to do these things really hasn't changed all that much. It's really like knowing how to do the work, right? Not can I do the work because like, once I got here, like I, I had always been able to do it, right? It's just knowing how to do it and how to do it efficiently. And so, right, the, the thing that I wish I would have taken back, right, if I, if I had, you know, 2015 Gabe in here, like it would be a different conversation about, all right, yeah, like you can do this work, but you have to do it this particular way, right? And in a lot of ways, it's like harder to do that when you're first getting in because it's an adjustment period, right? If you're coming from an, if you're coming from another place, you get, you got a geographic adjustment. There's a cultural adjustment, and then there's this new professional academic adjustment that right makes it kind of like you're in a whirlwind, or whatever. And like those messages that you know about how to do this work, they were still there, but in caught in the like matrix of everything else, it kind of gets lost in the sauce, right? Um, but just being able to to you know, if I had that opportunity to go back and then say, okay, this, like, you're in this new space, you're in this new space, right? Even if you don't know what your dissertation project is going to be, that's fine, because most people don't know for a while, and even then, they get past comps, and some people be ABD and be changing their whole dissertation topics. I've seen it happen. So, even if you don't know that, there are things that you can do right now that are going to make you better, Right? And if you love this, then like, these are the things that you can do that are going to make you better. And these are the things that are going to like set you up to make this process easier for you. Right. Not that it's going to be easy because it's not easy. Right. But it will, but it can be easier for you. And there are efficient ways to go through about this. Yeah. Um, I think that's the, that's the key, right. Is um, giving students the resources in the right way or in a, giving students the resources so that they can receive the information. Yeah, because yeah. if you're just telling someone something and they're not in the space to understand it or they're trying to adjust, like it's either that student within themselves has to be like, all right, you know what, let me stop thinking about the fact that I just moved to this new city where you know i'm the only black person in my program and let me just think about what i need to do to be in this program there's right. actually a book that claude m Steele wrote it's called i think stereotype threats or it's about stereotype threats but it's basically about the fact of when you're adjusting to new things and new environments those are added like barriers or roadblocks that you have to get through before you can actually start to produce and be effective in whatever job you're meant to do while you're a graduate student. Yep. I think that's a, that's a very important point that you raised. And so if you're one person that wants to succeed in there, one of the things that my advisor taught me, um, and I've been trying to implement, like this is as recent as like this year, <laughs> right? So this is really, really, really new. Um, but he calls it the concept of the two, 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 right? And so he's saying, right, at every point, at every point in time, he has two things that are out in the circulation, right? Being submitted and reviewed and things of that nature. He has two things there. And then he has two projects, articles, ideas that he's currently writing and working on, right? And then in addition to that, he has two ideas in the back of his head that he wants to get to. Once the two go out into the world, it's like a cert it's like a, a rotation. All right, mm -hmm. I got two out. That means I need to get these other two that I'm writing. Got to get them out. That means these ideas, I got to move those up. And it's literally a process of, you know, like that cycle of, of making sure that goes, that, that cycle continues. Because if you want to show that, right, the publishing 
cycle or this yeah the publishing cycle for some fields is like relatively like shh, like long and so you know you're it's not like i'm going to write an article today i'm going to get it submitted and then it'll be you know revise resubmit or accept it and it's going to be published in the fall like no if i'm submitting today it's probably not going to be published for another 18 to 24 months mm-hmm and so, yeah, and it's very dependent upon the field, right? Some fields they publish within two, three months, and then other fields, like you said, it takes a year, backlog. two years. Yeah, they're backlogged. And depending on like what your goals are, like that's super important. Um, which being like committed to like that kind of grind or what could be viewed as a grind, right? Is why it's like super, super, super important that people love like what they do. One of the things that I learned, again, during comprehensive exams, which would have been like much helpful, right? In, I don't know, master's classes, I guess. <laughs> My advisor told me it was that, you know, note taking is not writing. He said, only writing is writing. And so scribbling is not writing, like jotting in the margins is not writing. Only writing is writing. If it's, you know, writing out what the central argument is, any rebuttals you have or any um, extra evidence you want to like bring into it or your reactions to it, right? For everything that you're writing, I'm sorry, everything that you're reading, you want to write some text to it, right? Somewhere between 500 to 1,000 words. And so that translates out to about anywhere between one to three pages, you know, Fanon, right? Which is super dense obviously right if you're if you're not if you're not into for now like it can be really hard to grasp um but if you can like read that read that for now, let's say the rest of the earth right or black skin white mask if you're reading black skin white mask um and you then after immediately after write a thousand words stepping into a completely different topic but i still want to address it that that's a good habit to have for um organizing your data or organizing your literature. Um, I know for the thesis that I have to write, like we have to do a literature review section. And if I've read all of these articles, but I don't remember what was in the first article, well, guess what? I gotta waste my time and go back and reread that first article just so that I can pull out two or three sentences. When, if I would have done as you just stated where read the article and then wrote out, you know, key information points from that article, as well as my thoughts on that article, then I, I'm saving myself a lot of time at the end because I've been curating all of these articles and my thoughts along the way. Yeah. And then the second thing that I wanted to make a comment about is the delegation of, you know, or setting goals. That's how I would translate what you were saying is that, um, whatever you're doing, whatever task you're trying to complete, it will take up as much time as you give it. So if you give something that, you know, you can do an hour, three hours, oh, best believe somehow, some way, it's going to take you three hours to do it. Versus if you give it 50 minutes to do, nine times out of 10, you'll still get it done in those 50 minutes. You know, like that's just, we're wired to okay, you know what, I can relax, I got some time, it's three hour task, it ain't gonna be that much. Let me just do this at my leisure versus, oh, I got an hour, oh, all right, let me focus and like get it done. Right. So that has been uh, also a game changer for me in that like with certain things, I'll set like, all right, I'm only working on this for this two hours today and I have to get these things done. Those things where, right, you were getting those messages, but sometimes it takes a little while to click from Dr. Collette to one of the things that I learned was how to translate my bigger goals, right? So like if I look at the macro level, like these large goals into micro, like micro and sub macro level kind of like milestones, right? And so let's say if I want to read 50 books by, you know, this summer, right? And it's January, that means, okay, I have six months to read 50 books. So if I have six months to read 50 books, that means, you know, in the first three months, I need to read 25 books. And in the second month, three months, I need to read 25 books. So that means, all right, 25 divided by, you know, three, right, is a little bit like what, eight and a half? Every month, I need to read eight and a half books. 
And then that means, all right, if I know in every month I need to read eight and a half books, how do I break down eight and a half books over uh, such and such amount of time, right? Over like a week, four weeks. And then it's like, okay, so I need to break this up. And then you got to like match that up with what your other obligations are. And you, and it helps you to realize really quickly how realistic or unrealistic your goals are. <laughs> um, because if you're saying like you have these super lofty goals and sometimes like that's how I was, right? Like I would have a lot of, you know, lofty goals or even manageable goals, but I had no concept of actually managing time. Right. I was always the type that was just kind of like blowing in the wind, like doing things when I needed to do them. You know what I mean? If it's not in the front of my mind, it's probably not going to be there. Um, and yeah, that worked well enough in undergrad because depending on where you are in undergrad, right, it's totally acceptable to, to do the Sunday night scholar thing for the Monday morning paper that's due and crank it out and then get it done. Right. And one of the things that I had to learn the hard way, because I'm stubborn, I learned the hard way that, you know, Sunday night scholar and the Monday morning superstar is not a real thing here. Right. Not in grad school. <laughs> not in grad school. And so once I learned that, right, a couple of hard, hard headed lessons, but like once I learned that, then it's like, okay, well, I need to know how to do this. Right. And depending on different folks is like, uh, you know, how they come to this thing, right? People have different challenges, right? And so I had different challenges and stuff in terms of my own self, like how to actually build these things out, right? So it's not even that, like, I just wasn't that way. Like, I didn't even have, like, the tools necessary to know how to do that. And so mm -hmm. a lot of that was, like, working through those challenges and trying to get myself into a space to where, right, I am best equipped to succeed. And holding yourself accountable, whether that be yourself individually or an accountability partner, right? A life partner or however you want to do it, right? Once you set those mechanisms in place, like make sure that you're surrounding yourself with people who can help hold you accountable.